Hello, hello, good morning, or not morning for some of you. I don't know if this is working. I haven't done a live in forever. Let me just pull it up. Okay, I think, I think we're live. I think it's actually in the world. We're all hanging out, for real. Hi guys, how are you? Uh, we were chatting in the comments and I wanted to just be like, this is so cool how many of us get to hang out that would honestly never get a chance to hang out. Like Belgium, Kansas, Connecticut, I think Connecticut, my brain's like, wait, hold on, CT, I think Connecticut, right? Um, Dallas, Pakistan, what is MD? Why is my brain quitting on me today? It's early for me. Missouri, <laughs> it's not Maine, is it? No. Anyway, now I feel stupid. <laughs> Um, we are just chatting and I wanted to share all this stuff we were chatting about, all the social distancing going on. And I just wanted to say I'm really thankful for you guys and the fact that we have internet and that we can just hang out and so, like just do this together. And honestly, we are so blessed to have internet. So Phoenix, I love this. This I have to pop on the screen because I relate. Uh, we were talking in the comments beforehand and I think it was Caitlin was like, how is the social distancing going and I was like yeah it hasn't really changed my life at all because <laughs> I'm such an introvert like I am the person who I love once I go out and I see people let me know if you relate to this once I'm out I love it and I'm happy that I went out and I'm thankful that I you know pushed myself but I'm the person who's always looking for an excuse like oh, I just I wish I could get out of this because I just want to be home alone <laughs> like introvert life you know, you guys, like, if you relate, let me know. So, yeah, it's, like, the perfect excuse. Social distancing is, like, how I live anyway. <laughs> That's terrible. Um, I'm half joking. Like, I do go out, I promise, but half serious, too. And I was telling everybody in the comments that my hubby is the one who's struggling because he's, like, a high extrovert. We're learning that. Like, I thought so beforehand, but now I'm sure of it. <laughs> so, yeah, but social distance is something I'm comfortable with, too. Exactly, Allie. Totally normal. Uh, so I was saying hi to everybody in the comments. Uh, Missouri, am I right? MS? You guys, it's been a long time since I learned this thing. It's so horrible. I feel bad. Pennsylvania, yes. Philadelphia suburbs from the Philippines. Love it. Uh, oh my gosh. Okay. And I did, like I said, we were chatting in the comments. So I have a cover reveal. Not a cover reveal because I'm saving that. It just got finished yesterday, but I have a sneak peek to show you guys today. So yay. I know I'm excited too. Um, and this is just so interesting. We were just talking about, yeah, exactly. Social media is the bomb. Uh, North Carolina, right? Jen, I love it. I would be at a loss without internet and phone. I just love this. I love that we're hanging out. And then oh, Minnesota represent. Uh, it is way too cold here. By the way, we went out walking, the sun's shining. It looks like it should be warm. It's not warm. So my hubby and I walked twice yesterday because he was struggling so much. He's like, let's go out again. Like, this is the only thing we can do. <laughs> Hi from Italy. How is it in Italy? Let us know, Veronica. I saw the most beautiful, beautiful thing uh, the other day about how you guys like stand out on your balconies and sing together. And I was just like, I was te I'm tearing up now thinking about it. So that was really cool. Ah, what am I doing? Um, I don't know about you guys, but I'm weirdly emotional lately. So I hope I'm not the only one. Oh my gosh. Okay. The comments just went whoosh. And I realized how many more there are that I was missing. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Hey, Brittany. It's my CP, you guys. Okay. I'm trying to find where I left off because it just went nuts. It just, all of them came in all at once. Alabama, Transylvania. That's so cool. Oh my gosh, Ontario, Canada, Austin, Texas. Hello, hello, everybody. Idaho, New York, sweet. California, Maryland, the UK. Nice, what time is it there? And Ireland, oh my gosh, I love Ireland. That's like one of the first places I ever traveled and it was like, anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Washington, hey, Minnesota, yes, Rachel, represent, I love it. Arizona, uh, Oklahoma, right? Right. Again, I'm like questioning my knowledge of the states. Like, am I being anyway? Netherlands. I love it. Yes. Really. Thanks, Allie. Aside from working at home, my life hasn't changed much. Yeah. Yep. And because I worked from home, uh, 
I honestly, I was like, the only difference for me was that my hubby was home all the time. Sorry, I have it on the wrong thing that I'm answering. <laughs> but my hubby being home has actually made it harder for me because he just wants to chat all day. And I'm like, hey, I'm actually still working. Like, I'm, I'm trying really hard to still get these books out for people and give them something to do. <laughs> so uh, Puerto Rico, love it. Uh, let's see. I'm too slow. I can't remember what we're relating to. Probably the introvert life, right? Jamaica, Idaho. Hey, Ingrid. Uh, I feel like the bars and restaurants are going to be booming after this. <laughs> oh my gosh. I have to share this with my hubby. He's going to laugh so hard. It's so true though. He's going to be like, let's go everywhere. Let's do everything. Let's just be out all the time. And then I'm going to be like, uh, no. <laughs> Virginia, sweets. Uh, Virginia is so beautiful. Uh, things haven't changed much for Evie. Ah, dang it. The comments just skipped really far again. All right. I'm going to try to scroll through really, really fast. Oh, Allie, that sounds amazing. I would love, love, love to be able to walk all over the place. Oh, okay. So yes, Caitlin's reminding me of the whole purpose for why we're here. <laughs> I love it. Uh, so today was going to be my Barnes & Noble book signing um, right now at 11. And we were waiting till the last minute. I, I mean, they were waiting. I was letting them decide, obviously. And so when they were like, yeah, I think we need to cancel. I was like, I agree. Let's keep everybody safe. But um, I was like, hey, do you guys want to do a virtual signing? Because this store, you guys, has been so sweet to me and they have taken such good care of me. I've done three other signings there besides this was going to be the fourth, I think. And I just am like, they bought the books they have them ready to go. And now I can't bring anybody in. So I was feeling terrible. And I was like, what do you guys think of a virtual signing? So I actually went, hold up. I actually went and brought uh, a bunch of bookmarks with me and business cards and I my Sharpies. And I went to the store and signed a bunch of them. Uh, and then I was like, I'm going to do a virtual signing. I'm going to tell all my friends and we're going to make this a thing because I want to support this store for taking such good care of me. But then, uh, this is like a weird idea I have. So you guys know I also have these book plates from when I did the book box, the Once Upon a Book Club box, right there. You can almost see it. Uh, and so I have some of these left and I was like, I can make your signing, like the books are signed, but I can also give you a personalized signature. Hold it right. If you want, all you have to do is email me your proof of purchase from the Blaine store specifically. Hey, I actually had a cute little graphic. There we go. Uh, so proof of purchase, right? Plus your name, obviously, if you want it signed to you, I need to know your name that you want it signed to you and your mailing info so that I can actually mail it to you. And then you will get one of these in the mail. And if you want, you can put that you want like a writerly signature or like a silly signature if you want something funny, just something to entertain you and a fun surprise. So yeah, that is what I'm thinking. For that, I'm sorry, I'm like really bad at live streams. I'm covering it. But just so you guys know, again, proof of purchase, your name and mailing info, and you can get a fun little bonus in the mail from me. <laughs> so, okay. I am so sorry that I'm missing some comments here. Hold on one second. Oh my gosh, you guys, I have allergies. I should probably clear that up. I'm like sniffling, but it's because I forgot to take my allergy meds. And it's allergy season, so when I feel perfectly fine, but when I sneeze in front of anybody, I get the weirdest looks because it's like, are you okay? I'm okay. I promise. Um, so far, so far, so good. I hope you guys are all doing well too. Oh, yay. I love that. Thank you. Okay. So um, the BN signing was canceled. Perfect. But you can get signed books there now. So that's amazing. Thank you, Rachel. So what the store told me, I should have made my graphic have a phone number. I will put it in the description right after this live, but there's, or you can just Google Blaine Barnes and Noble store. Um, and they are basically saying like, just talk to a human, ask for a signed copy. They will send you one of the signed copies with, you know, all the good stuff inside. And then, yeah, I will make it personalized for you. So good morning. Good morning. I'd love to hear your story about Ireland. Okay. Okay. I, <laughs> this is such a tangent. I was like the weirdest teenager in the world. And I had this like dream where I was like going to meet my future husband in Ireland. And I was 17 and I went there 
or was it 18? Anyway, I was like, oh, it's going to be amazing. And obviously, like, I, my hubby's from Iran. He's not from Ireland, but I just, I love Ireland. And I had the weirdest, like, dreams <laughs> for my life. So, okay, I'm going to pop this off for a minute so I can see better. And, okay. Oh, man, the comments jumped again. I see Jessie. Hi, guys. This is one of my other critique partners. She's amazing. I'm trying to scroll up, but I have lost my place. So we'll just start where we are. Everybody's saying where they're from, and it's just the coolest thing, you guys, because even if this virus wasn't happening, I would never be able to see, like, Portugal. I, like, in Italy, things are hard for Italians, but we are lucky to be in a safe little town stuck at home. I'm an introvert, but my husband is struggling. I totally relate. My hubby is struggling, too. Um, I'm glad that your town is safe, though. That's really encouraging to hear. Okay. Hi, Jesse. <laughs> uh, the social distancing reminds me of one of the societies in S Moms. I never know how to say his name. I robot series. In one, people are isolated. I feel like, and I hope this is okay to say, I feel like the stories that us as writers are going to tell are going to start being there's going to be a lot more with like pandemics and kind of almost like the post apocalyptic vibe and just because we're all going to relate so much like it's going to be I don't know what do you guys think I think it's going to be the new thing I don't know I could be wrong but I think oh I'm so sorry I should have explained this book plates okay so I learned this after I made these book plates are usually a sticker, which I didn't know. So I made postcards, but the idea is if you, if the author can't physically sign your book, maybe you already have it. Um, I don't know, like for book boxes, they do this a lot when the book box, like they order the copies to them. So they have it on site and the author lives somewhere else. The author will sign a bunch of these. I'll show you the one that I like. This is the one that I like made myself. So I just, I don't know. It's, I thought it was pretty. Um, and then you stick it inside the book. So like the reason I figured out later after I made these that they're a sticker usually is so you can actually stick them right where the signature would have been like on the title page. But again, I didn't know that when I made these. So I use the, um, this beautiful graphic that goes really well with the cover. And so you can stick it inside or you cannot stick it inside or you can let it just, you know, float around. doesn't matter. But that's what I use for my, and then I also use them as like little thank you notes. So when people buy signed copies for me, ah, this is tricky right here. These are my last signed copies left. I've been using these as like thank you cards because it's pretty. Anyway, I'm very good at tangents if you haven't noticed. <laughs> hey, hey, love it. If only shipping from the U.S. to Canada wasn't so expensive. I know Jessie lives in Canada and she's told me about it and I'm like, wow, I feel bad. And shipping, um, just so you know, like shipping overseas is, is even more expensive. But that is why I think these are cool. And I did put these on my set upside down. No, here we go. These, um, I did have them on my website briefly, but I was struggling to figure out shipping because it kept charging like $5 and it's just an envelope. And I didn't know how to get rid of it. So I was like, I don't know. I don't want to push these when it's like really expensive. But I had these on my website as like a option for overseas so you could still like get a signed copy if you put that inside all right I'm such a tangent person what's wrong with me <laughs> yeah more like a sticker it's usually adhesive um actually for those of you who are authors and you like want to do this someday I was in some author Facebook group not too long ago a month or two ago and they were talking about how they'll use Etsy and they can create um uh, you, you like, you sign your name in a program. This is like more complicated than I know how to do, but a graphic designer could do it. You, you write your signature and maybe like a quote from the book or something cool. And then you kind of use the graphic work to make it what they call a PNG file. So it's transparent so that the only part of the sticker is the signature and everything else is like transparent or clear. And then they mail them out that way, like a little square that's mostly transparent with the signature. So that's really cool. If I ever do um, book plates in the future, like I run out of these, I would do that. Yay. And by the way, you guys, the adorable author is the one who suggested that I do a live stream. And at first I was like, <laughs> I'm not a big live stream person. I don't know if I want to, but now I'm so glad I get to hang out with you guys. So very good suggestion. Thank you. 
Uh, okay. Hey, Jess. Hey, Holly. Oops. It just skipped really far. What just happened? Uh, okay, hold on. Sorry, guys. My MC is from Ireland. Yes. Ooh, I should write an Irish character. I love that. Hey, happy Nowruz. If you guys didn't know, today, today? Yes, today is the Persian New Year. My sister-in-law is having a party. We haven't decided if we're going to go yet or if we're going to social distance. But usually uh, the Persian New Year, they're on a slightly different calendar. And they celebrate, um, it's like the first day of spring, but it's also like the New Year's beginning. So, you know, if you didn't get your goals in January, you could start again today. <laughs> Oh, which is awesome. It's such weird timing, though, that it's landing in the middle of all this, the virus stuff. I'm an ambivert. This time it's relaxing, but I miss my friends. I can relate to that, actually, because, like, like I, I feel great and I'm getting lots done, but then there's those moments of, like, oh, I wish I could see people, <laughs> like, in person. Oh, man. Let's see. I'm from Washington and we're in quarantine. I feel like I'm living in the start of a dystopian book. That's legit what it feels like. And okay, again, I hope this isn't um, like, I don't know. I don't mean to offend anybody. I like to kind of be lighthearted about it. And there was this meme that some writer shared. I can't remember. It was on Instagram. And they were like, if only I'd known, like I got my dystopian novel wrong. If only I'd known that the first thing people would do is buy toilet paper. <laughs> we, my hubby and I are just giggling over the toilet paper phenomenon. Cause like no dystopian book has that. That's, that was a total surprise <laughs> that people wanted toilet paper. Um, but nobody wants the soap for after. Anyway, I'll stab myself. <laughs> Um, I was already writing a pandemic story and I feel weird about it and stopped. I don't think you should feel weird about it at all. If you, Mandy, you were here at the beginning when I was saying that I feel like it's going to be so relatable and it's going to feel so much more real that people, um, I think I'm just guessing. I think people are going to want something that they can just relate to and like feel the feels, but it's not real versus how it is so real right now. I don't know, that's my guess. What do you guys think? Let me know what you're thinking. Oops, uh, I'm sure many authors right now wanna write all these stories. Yeah, exactly, uh, writing something totally different, but even it's still even a little bit intriguing because it's so relatable. And I think that saying of write what you know is totally on point for this. Um, oh yeah, okay. I'm finally catching up to what I was talking about earlier. I apologize. I feel like we might get back to them or everyone's going to want to escape. Yes. And avoid them. That could be true. I agree, Brittany. Mm. Okay. Definitely seeing the surge. Yes. We are inspired by our surroundings. I agree. It's going to probably be a balance. I bet you there's going to be like two people groups and one is going to be like, give me all the stuff that I can relate to. And the other's going to be like all you know, I just want to not think about that because I've just lived through it. And I'm probably going to be in the second camp that's like, I want to think about other things, but my hubby is totally like, let's just keep thinking about it all the time, all the time. So yeah, I don't know if you guys want to keep talking about this or if you want to talk about other things, like let me know where you're, what you're feeling because I don't want to be yet another place that's talking about it. And I should probably say this, I forgot um, I have in this live stream, I have plans to show you cover sneak peeks and updates on that because it just got finished yesterday. The audiobook updates because I have found out some news. The hardcover, I say hardcover chat because I don't have like news, but I want to talk to you guys and get your opinion and your thoughts. The writing and editing so far for the Stolen King or the Curse Hunter. <laughs> and of course, like chat about whatever you guys want to. So comment with your questions and let me know like what you want to chat about today. I apologize. My allergies are terrible. So I feel like I'm getting really, really stuffy because I forgot to take my allergy medicine. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, okay, John, the company I use is KDP. So it's the Amazon imprint. Imprint? I don't know if that's the right word. The print on demand company. And then Ingram Spark is where I do pre-orders for paperback, only paperback, because I think that their royalties are not great. Um, but it also lets me get into bookstores and whatnot. And then I actually have just started using Draft to Digital, 
recently in the past few months or so for ebooks to go wide so that I'm no longer just on Amazon. And it is a little bit complicated, but I could do a video on that if you guys want. Let me know. Let's see. Oh, okay. This is perfect. So if you're just showing up, the whole thing today is that this is a virtual signing. Like I want you guys to be able to get signed copies. I don't own any stock. Like the only ones on my shelf are the proof copies. So I'm not giving those out. And the Barnes and Noble in Blaine, Minnesota has a ton of great stock. And I went in and signed, I think 16 total, uh, eight of the Stolen Kingdom and eight of the Ginny Key. So there's not that many signed. And after that, it would just be the book plates. So if you want to sign copy, yeah, I hope that you jump on it. And I hope that they all go, honestly, because I want to support this store so badly. I just really want them to have, you know, a, a little bit of sunshine and happiness in the midst of, like, I don't think as many people are coming in. They said they were still busy at the time, but that was, like, oh, I want to say five days ago, a week ago, three days ago. I'm really bad with time. Um five days ago, I think, that I went in. And so things have changed really quickly, as you guys know. And I just think that, like, if we can support businesses, if we can support um, authors, if we can just be, like, giving people shout outs, like, you know, I just think that would be really helpful during this time to keep businesses going and keep things running, especially books. So anyway, to answer your question, Brandon, um, I would absolutely love if you wanted to, you just call the store again. I regret not putting the phone number in here, but if you, uh, Google blame Minnesota Barnes and Noble, or I will pop the phone number into the, uh, comment box right after this live stream is done so that you can go and grab your book there. But I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that all of them will sell. Honestly, I just am so excited to see how this goes. Oh, yes, allergies in Minnesota. We do we don't have snow on the ground actually, but it's cold out. So it's this weird I always get allergies really bad for the last like 10 years, so it's just this time of year. I don't know if anybody else has allergies. Let me know. Oh shoot, I'm not keeping up with the comments. I'm sorry, you guys. Happy New Year. Yes, for the Nauru's Nauru's. I never say it right. I don't have the right accent for it. Okay. Yes, quarantine. Either people are quarantined or self-quarantined at this point. I feel like we're all in that boat where it's a good time to write. I think we should be positive about it and have like the upsides and focusing on that I think is really, really wise. Let's see, let's see. Ah, uh, thank you. You are so sweet. I love it. I love that. In the mood to read dystopian. I'm unlike still wanting my fantasy books personally, but that's just because that's what I've always wanted. Um, let's see. I feel like I'd rather oops, write about the aftermath of a pandemic. That'd be kind of cool, actually. Yeah, like the aftermath, like what happened next. Yay! Okay, I should get to the sneak peek soon. Um, I promise I will. I promise. Bring on the cover. Oh, here's a good question. Okay. What is your writing routine? Um, okay. I'm going to be honest, like brutally honest that I have one, but I don't stick to it well. Like I am the kind of person who has guilt trips and feels bad when I don't write, but then I also know that it's important to take care of yourself. And especially during this time, I'm kind of all over the place. You know what I mean? I don't know if you guys feel that way, Ugh. but what I have, let's see if I have it near me. I think I do. I think it's in this book. This is my little like bullet journal thing. And I don't keep like a fancy bullet journal, so don't get too excited. But here is my editing plan. So what I try to do, first of all, is I am trying to give myself grace, meaning that I put in buffer days or catch up days right there. And I think I have like another one here. And I just try not to, I try not to say that I'm going to do more than I know I'm physically capable of doing. And then my plan, again, not sticking to it very well, but my plan is to what they call eat the frog. Okay. So bear with me. This sounds weird, but eat the frog stands for do the hardest thing first. And so what I found is that if I don't do the writing first, if I do the, you know, I do the newsletter and the YouTube videos and the, I'm listening to the audiobook and like a billion other things. 
then I never get around to the writing. So my plan, now that I'm in crunch mode and editing for my deadline to send to my editor, is to eat the frog and do the writing first every day, except today because I'm hanging out with you. <laughs> so that is the news there. Okay, so audiobook news. This is the perfect time to talk about it. And yay, can't wait. I'm excited. Um, by the way, let's start with this. Your narrator is one of my favorite booktubers. She's my favorite booktuber too. And I don't listen to a lot of booktube, but she's still my favorite. And I I don't know if I've said this before, so I guess this is officially the announcement, but Murphy Napier, I hope I'm saying her name right, is going to be, is not going to be, is the audio book narrator. So she is halfway through right now. And uh, what's been happening is number one, again, being brutally honest with you guys, I found that I'm not an audio learner at all. So like I'm so visual that when I listen to something, my brain wanders and it's terrible. And so I'm a little bit slower to get through it and give her feedback, but I try to sit down, listen to the chapters. And so what we do is we listen and I give her notes and then she's going to edit it. And then I'm going to listen again. And then I think once we get through everything, here is the news that I have to share that I just found out. She emailed me like two days ago and said that the uh, platform that we use, ACX, in case you're interested, um, ACX is uh, Audible, I think. I don't know. Suddenly I'm questioning everything. But anyway, they are changing their, or they already did change their uh, plan of submission so that once you submit your book, they used to take, I think, two weeks or something to review, and now it's 40 days. So if I submitted it, submitted it, it today. Um, today is the 21st. It would be 40 days from now before I would even know if it would be acceptable. And they could reject it if they find any issues. I don't think they would because Murphy is amazing. But again, it's that weird, like, who knows how long it's going to take. And here's the other interesting part because of Corona being in the mix, it sounds like she said her other um, author is having it take even longer. So it could take even longer. So what I'm thinking, I think I did the math and it was like maybe May, maybe. <laughs> so I will definitely keep you guys updated. That is what I've just learned about the audiobook. So I don't know if that helps. Yeah, Murphy, but she spells it with an E. Exactly. So if you guys want to look her up, um, I hope somebody can put it in the comments. Murphy with an E and then Napier is N-A-P-I-E-R. And she is awesome. If somebody wants to put her channel in the comments, I'll put it down below as well. I should be writing notes for this. <laughs> My brain, I'm going to forget. So I'll put Murphy. And what was the other thing? I already forgot what I was going to share. Something to do with the cover. Oh, the bookstore phone number. Phone number. Okay. All right. Yes, try to stay lighthearted. Exactly. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I never thought, okay, I'm going to share that with my hubby also. I hope this doesn't offend anybody. I try to keep really lighthearted about it, um, but he is going to laugh so hard when he hears that. <laughs> oh, let's see. It would be interesting, uh, but it can be too soon after this. Yeah, yeah, it might take a little bit of time. Um, let's see. Love Drafted Digital, also use Ingram. Awesome. Um, what would it, okay, this is cool. Like I actually thought about this and I was like, I've shared in interviews and I've shared, you know, with the book box and all these other like side things, how I got the inspiration to write the books, but have I ever shared it with you guys? I, don't, I can't remember. So short version, Bethany, short version. Uh, okay. So my hubby, he's from Iran and we, he likes to make fun of Disney cause I love Disney. And so he was saying that in the Aladdin movie, the uh, genie or Ginny is how it's said in Farsi, Farsi, whatever. I am tangenting again. <laughs> um, so Ginny, he said, is like the Persian word for devil. And so when he told me that he was like making fun of Aladdin and I was like, no, that's not true. But then I was like, I'm going to look it up because I love to look things up. And he, um, he, he was like, no, I'm sure I'm right. But when I looked it up, the uh, Google thing said, you know, 
Ginny stands for like a supernatural um, being that can be either good or evil. And so that triggered this idea of um, how there's angels and demons, you know, they're the same, but they're good and evil. And like, it just brought all these ideas into my mind. And it started this whole process of like, what about this? And what about this? And oh, what if they did that? And you know, the brainstorming that happens when you get a good idea. And then I was like, what if this was an Aladdin retelling and there were a race of Ginny? <laughs> and so that's where that started. That was like literally the shortest version and it was still really long. Uh, <laughs> Ooh, I like this. A reading of an excerpt. Um, oh, okay. All right. This is such a sidetrack, but I just, okay. <laughs> I turn around and I see this. That's my baby, you guys. Honey, I see a squirrel. Look. And I'm so mean. <laughs> She's too cute. I can't help it. Uh, okay. I'll think about it. If, if, it, if other people want a reading, I'll think about it. Let me know if you want that. I feel a little weird, but maybe, maybe you could do that. Um, inspiration for Evelyn's number. Oh, okay. Talking about the OG series. Let's do this. Ooh. Okay. Evelyn's number was a weird mix of a dream that I had in college and uh, my job at the time. So I used to work at a hospital uh, for about like 10 years. I worked at a bunch of different hospitals and clinics. And so I, at the time I was in environmental services, which is a fancy word for housekeeping. And we wore brown scrubs, but one day I forgot my brown scrubs and I had to use the um, like surgery scrubs that are kind of like the they're in the hospital, like backup for anybody who needs them and they're washed, you know, and ready to go. So I put on these light blue scrubs and people thought I was a nurse and I got treated differently. And it was this like almost like a caste system like India. And so I started like pulling in influences from that and from like South Korea, South Korea, North Korea. Anyway, North Korea, I think. And uh, yeah, I was just kind of, again, starting from one idea that spiraled into pulling in all these other influences. So I really, really like uh, mixing influences. And I feel like that brings a level of realism to a story, but it also makes it brand new and fresh. Because if you're blending, you know, two very different things, like Hunger Games, for example, you guys, if you don't know this, she was watching a reality show I think it was like a game show. And then she was watching like Africa and the kids starving. And am I making, I, I might be saying that wrong. But anyway, it was these two very contrasting things. And she merged the idea into the Hunger Games. So I really think that that can make a fantastic story. Um, okay. So bookstores here are closed. Oops, oops. I just, it just skipped again. So sorry, you guys. Um, my brain is like, oh my gosh, a million comments. Okay, there. This is what I was reading before it skipped. Bookstores are closed, but um, Barnes & Noble, I think, is still open. I mean, they told me that they'd be happy to mail out, but it's worth checking on. I'll put it in the comments. Okay. Put note on if open. But I hope that they are. I think they are. Yay, so glad you're here, Michelle. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so Barnes & Noble is, it is struggling, you guys, because so many people are reading online. And so again, if you missed in the beginning, I just really, really want to support the store in Blaine because they are fantastic. And I actually, okay, side note, I actually worked at this Blaine store way back in the day when I was like 18 or 19 or something like that. I'm 32 now, in case you're wondering. Uh, let's see, let's see. <laughs> Did you manage to find the girl trying to be you? No. Um, I don't know if you guys are following me on Instagram. You might have seen I posted yesterday that somebody on Facebook is pretending to be me. So if you get a weird message from somebody, I can only assume that she's trying to get money from people by using my name. And so if you see anything sketchy that you think is me, it's probably, I hope, I hope it's not me. <laughs> I try not to be sketchy. Um... Oh, hi. Thank you. Thanks for going through this process. I'm getting ideas for my own launch. Oh, good. Okay, so if you're thinking in-person events won't be going on in April, I agree. Um, I actually had an April event called the Teen Teen Lit something something here in Minnesota that I was going to do that got canceled. And 
Um, I've also heard like BookCon was moved. BookCon was in June and it's been moved to July in case you guys are curious. Um, and I think online events are going to be the thing. I think that we'll still have fun. Um, I've been trying to encourage people if you missed my video on, you know, how Corona is going to affect authors. I think we can still have a ton of fun online. I think this is, like I said at the beginning, more of us are getting to hang out that would never have had a chance to hang out than ever. So like when would all of us from all these different countries be hanging out all at once other than online, right? Like this is, this is awesome. So I'm a homeschooled hermit. My life is exactly the same. Same. My, I am in the same place. Nothing's really changed for me yet. Um, favorite part about writing. Okay, let's see. This is going to sound terrible. Um, my favorite part is right when I've just finished. <laughs> Usually. I mean, I love, I love writing in the moment sometimes, but just being real with you guys, I love, love, love when I've just finished writing something and there's that thing that I call a writer's high where you're like, I'm amazing. This is so good. And like later on, you'll be like, oh, <laughs> I need to fix that and that and that and that. And you'll kind of have more clarity. But when you first get done writing something and you know that feeling, the writer's high when you're like, this is so good. I've just written a masterpiece. <laughs> and then of course later you're like, oh no, maybe not so much. But I really like that writer's high. <laughs> mm. This is, um, what do you call it? A drink mix, by the way, in case you guys are like, why is she drinking pink water? <laughs> I really like my drink mixes. Let's see. Do, do, do. Okay. Here is a suggestion and I will support this because Megan is awesome. Um, if anybody is in the mood to read dystopian pandemic apocalypse. Check out Alethea by Megan. And Megan is an amazing author tuber, by the way. She has, um, okay, remind me what her channel is called because I feel like it's not her name. I feel like it's something with a cloud. But anyway, remind remind all of us if you can. Oh, <laughs> um, you're so sweet. I'll think about it. I need like one more person to say it before I give in because <laughs> I feel weird about it. Uh, another good one, another recommendation if you guys are wanting to. Um, okay. Eat the frog. Yes, I don't know who came up with that analogy, but I, I think it's amazing. All right, I'm going to try to catch up. So I'm scrolling, scrolling. Are you ready for Camp Nano? Are you guys ready? Are you guys ready? I am not ready. But my plan is actually, um, if you saw my little editing schedule here, I'm actually sending to my editor on the 10th. So I, unless that counts as part of NaNo. I will officially be starting Camp NaNo on like the 11th. <laughs> and I want to, um, I've had my printed copy of the first draft. I like um, printed out at Office Max. So I just like send in the Word doc and of book four in the series. And I have had it ready to go. I want to do a reread and like kind of a big picture edit. And then I want to write the last five to 10 K of the story that I've never written because I was too scared and I didn't face it. So I want to finally face that in April. <laughs> All right. Let's see here. Yes, I know. Right. Ingrid, I'm so excited for it. And I will be sharing a sneak peek on Patreon soon of the first chapter. So as soon as like, I think she still needs to re-edit it. I don't know. I should ask her. Um, but as soon as I get like the final, final, sharing it on Patreon because it's going to be amazing. And I will link Patreon below if you guys are curious, because that is also where I'm going to share the full cover reveal today. Is it time for the cover sneak peek? I think it is. I think it's time. Okay. So first of all, I got to pull up my little thing here and then bear with me. Technically challenged. Oh, right here. It's right in front of my face. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> and this is, again, just a sneak peek, but I wanted to show you guys a little sneak peek of the character because it's Rena on the cover. And if you guys know, Rena is the mermaid in the Little Mermaid retelling of the Ginny Key. I probably should have said that. And so the Ginny Key is officially redesigned, rebranded. Um, and I wanted to shout out Mandy from her company. It's called Stone Ridge Books. She designed this cover. It's amazing. I promise I'll have a reveal coming eventually, but if you want to see it today, 
it's going to be on Patreon by the end of today. <laughs> so that's exciting. I also just wanted to say, I hope it's okay that I, I step away from the comments quick because I think this is worth talking about. Um, and I wasn't going to share this originally because of like legal reasons and because I just wanted to be positive. But so many people were asking me like, why did you do the rebrand? We love the original cover so much. And so here's the truth. Um, Eight Little Pages is, first of all, this is their website right now. But I knew about this. I knew it was coming anyway. I didn't know that they were going to close. I didn't know that they were going to go bankrupt. But I knew that their business was falling apart all the way back in December. And so, again, I, for legal reasons, I can't share a ton. I want to, you know, protect myself. Although I doubt that a company that doesn't exist anymore can sue you. But just to be safe, you know what I mean? Um, but I will just say this. I am super thankful that... Now, when people email me and they're like, hey, who is your cover designer? Can I ask them to be my cover designer? I just now I can just say, hey, here's the website. They are no longer in business. And I feel really, really good about that because I think that's the right thing. Um, and yeah, that's all I'm going to say on that. But I do want to say that it's it was not that I didn't want to use their covers anymore. And I just want to let you guys know that I'm still going to try to figure out if I can. Like, I have been doing my best to figure out how to do this. Like, ever since I learned in December and I started getting hints that likely I would not get my covers finished. And in case you guys don't know, I have the front covers, but I don't have the final spine and back cover. So I have enough for, like, an ebook, but not enough for the paperback. And uh, so... Originally, I was talking to Mandy about doing the covers, and that's what sparked this whole cover design thing, and it actually ended up being a really good thing, and we'll talk about that. But what I'm realizing now is that I need to look at the contract from A Little Pages, because they did sign over the rights to me, and I think I have the rights to change the cover and, like, you know, work with Mandy on finishing the cover, and I think think I have the rights to do that but I just I don't know yet and so it's all very up in the air so I appreciate you guys being so patient and so understanding but here's the upside <laughs> so back in December when I started realizing and I I started figuring out like they're not answering they weren't answering me about the audiobook they a lot of my author friends were not hearing back were not getting their covers that were promised and I was realizing this is going to be an issue I need to plan ahead. So Mandy and I actually got on a phone call and we were strategizing. And that is where this idea of the rebranding was actually born. I think it's right around that time. And it was like, uh, right in the midst of everything. I, I think I was looking at my books category on Amazon. Actually, let me just show you. Oops. So right here, I will, oops, here we go. Right here, if you look uh, at a books, if you scroll down a book page on Amazon and you find the product details section, all these little um, blue links at the bottom are the categories that the book is in. And so sometimes they'll rotate because the book is in more than three, but these are the top three that it's in. And so I clicked on that top one where you see it says young adult, royalty, fairy tales, and folklore. And at the time when I clicked on it, it was different books because this changes daily. But what I'm going to do, I saved this so that I could just scroll through for you guys and show you this page, for example, was a lot of what the first page looked like at the time. And you'll notice something <laughs> about these covers, especially the ones that are full on retellings. They all have something very, very similar in common. And again, I'm not going to repeat like the whole last video because you guys probably have seen it but all these princesses on the cover you guys and like back here the selection series uh top middle left middle bottom middle those are traditionally published but then the other ones on this page are a lot of self-published books and let's see here on this page bottom right but one over the siren that's a traditionally published book um, and there's a bunch of self-published books in this page bunch of self-pub in this page. Um, and you can kind of see the difference, but then there's some that could go either way. And I'm sorry for the loud noises here. Like if you go bottom, middle, and then one over to the one that's the princess one that looks like it's another Little Mermaid retelling, by the way, that one could go kind of either way. It could be traditional pub or self-pub. I'm pretty sure it's self-pub, but um, 
somebody asked me the question though, they were like, well, what about this book like right here, The Heart, A Heart So Fierce and Broken? That's a retelling. And I'm like, yeah, I think you're right that like publishers still take risks too. And the cool thing about that is I think that's a New York Times bestselling author. So they are so much more able to take a risk when the author has that credibility and that audience backing them up already. They can take risks. But so I can take risks too. Like there's nothing wrong with it. And I, th I think the Stolen Kingdom covers sold really, really well because they're beautiful. But here's what I think is that if you look at what's common, like for example, right here on the top right and the bottom left, you'll see that the Lunar Chronicles, which is another series of retellings, just got rebranded with people on the cover. And they had like hints of people on the cover before. They had a foot and like an arm and hair, <laughs> but now it's like a full on person. And I think that's because they do see the trend. There is a trend in retellings to have people on the cover. So, so to answer people's questions, it's not like you have to. You don't have to do the trend. And you know, it can be fun to experiment. It is a risk, but it can be cool to do. But if you know what the trend is and you know what your readers really, really are drawn to and, and that they are going to see something and go, that looks like this other book that I loved, I want that book, then why not? Why not use that to your advantage? So I just want to show you guys, this is the first book that really triggered this idea in my mind. And again, even though Eight Little Pages not answering and the whole um, that they were going bankrupt um, behind the scenes, which I didn't know, but I had hints of things going downhill. That was the negative side. But the positive side, and the reason I'm super thankful actually that this all went down, is that I saw this book, and I don't think I would have thought this if I wasn't, you know, worried about my cover. I looked at this and I said, that's an Aladdin retelling. I mean, it's so obvious. And then I started looking at other books, you know, like here's another series of retellings. They're all princesses on the cover. If you look at the bottom, you can see the whole series. Or um, this one is traditionally published, the selection series. And I should have put the Lunar Chronicles in there. I wasn't thinking, but um, I just, yeah, I just really wanted to show you guys that and be like, this is, I don't know. I don't know. I hope I'm explaining myself well, that this is, uh, this is the reason behind it. It's, it's both, I have to. <laughs> Eight Little Pages has put me in a position where I have to. I have to figure something out. I don't I don't know yet. I want to finish out the covers and paperback for the people who want them, but it's not going to be what I thought they were going to be. And I also don't want to represent that company anymore. And then the other side of it is I realize how much more effectively the person on the cover represents my series. And I'm really excited about that. So it's Started out negative, but it's ended up being a huge positive. Wonderful. I'm super excited about it. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys. And now I'm coming back to the comments. Thank you for letting me do that really long tangent. Um, and I'm just going to catch up really quick. There's no other narrators, just Murphy right now. Um, she is awesome. So backwards. Uh, Murphy is her first name. Napier is her last name. Yes, I think I did. Okay. And let's see here. <laughs> yes, Penny is still being super cute. Okay, okay, I will. I promise. After we finish chatting questions at the end, if you guys want to, I'll read a few paragraphs. Um, <laughs> you guys are funny. Thank you. Oops, I just skipped really far. Um, yeah, oh yeah, when I posted about the whole, the cover design in the, in my Patreon. Um, let's see. Yes, so I will just say this. I know of at least 10 authors off the top of my head. Natalia and I have talked. Uh, Jenna Moresi has changed cover designers. Um, Vivian Reese has dealt with them. Zach, Emily, uh, who else? Now I'm blanking because I'm like on the spot. But I can, oh, there's like so many authors who I've talked to. And I probably shouldn't say anymore. But just so you guys know, it's, it can be tricky. And I have a video on, you guys know, the self-publishing and how it's hard. It can be hard to work with people if they don't do what they say they're going to do and they don't follow through. This is like in general. 
it can be really hard. It can be a challenging experience. So thank you for always being so patient with me. I really appreciate that. That see, Charlie, that is a good question. So again, that's why I'm not, I'm trying not to make promises because I don't know. Like I have, if anybody's a, um, a lawyer who wants to like give me some free advice, that'd be cool because I, I think that I have all the rights to the covers. Like they don't exist. So it's not like they have the rights to it. Um, cause their company doesn't exist anymore. So the question is like, can I change it and can I sell it? I need to look into it before I promise anything. So yeah, <laughs> that should be the new cover. You never know. Could happen. <laughs> that was just me taking like Instagram and making it fully white and then erasing the face. So you could see just the face. Thank you so much, Rachel. That really, really means a lot to me because I like them both too. And I don't want anybody to think that I like want one or the other. It's just, it's circumstance. You know what I mean? And it's realizing my target audience and total strangers. Like you guys love my books. So you're here for me. And I really appreciate that. But what about total strangers? Like what will they be drawn to? So I need to think strategically and you know, it's a smart marketing tactic. So yeah, right. That's the thing. It's always worth looking into. Hi mom. I love you. That's my mom, you guys. <laughs> All right. Uh, let me scroll a little further. Uh, let's see. Doo -doo -doo. All right. I'm going to try to get to the bottom here. Hey, Rebecca. I'm so glad you made it. Um, yeah. Let me shout out Mandy. She is amazing. You guys should all work with her. We will be actually doing some collabs, so we'll share more details and secrets, but that's all I'll hint at right now. And if you want to go check out, all right, I'm going to write a note to myself. I'm going to link Mandy's uh, Stone Ridge books. So if you guys want to work with her, my pen just died. Um, yeah, she is awesome. Stone Ridge books. You could probably um, find her pretty easily, but I will definitely link her too. Hi. Oh, uh, let's see here. I'm going to share one other thing. Oh, here's a good question before I do that. Uh, how long does it typically take to do revisions? So I did a fun little like how I edit video recently. If you guys are curious, you can go watch that. Um, link below how I edit. I always have to like make notes or I will never remember to link things. But the short version is I like to, it takes me like one to two months to do a fast draft, which is something I got from NaNoWriMo. It's totally doable. If you guys are like, wow, that's so short. That's not possible. It is possible. People all around the world write their first draft in one month sometimes um, or two because sometimes you need that extra month if it's a longer book. And then I like to kind of step back and like forget about it because sometimes you're a little too close to the story after the first draft. Then I like to edit over a couple of months for myself. And so I'll do a bunch of passes at a big picture, you know, and then details and focusing on different things. And then I will uh, send it to my critique partners, edit with their feedback, send it to beta readers and edit with their feedback. And in case you guys are curious, that's the stage I'm in right now. I just got back all my beta reader feedback for The Cursed Hunter. I don't know if you can see the Curse Hunter from here. It's that one right here, the pink one. Book three in the series, The Beauty and the Beast Retelling. And then I'm editing for my editor with the beta reader feedback. So what I'll probably do is start with just their feedback. She's like moving pennies, like having a really good time back there. Uh, I will do their feedback first and it gets, it's really, there's so much that it's overwhelming. So I just try to do one thing at a time. Then I will kind of go back again for myself, for my editor, and be like, okay, stylistically, what do I want to fix? Read through it again. Then after my editor, I will obviously use her notes, and then I will, uh, what's next? I will usually just do a proofreading pass after that, because usually once I've completed the editor's notes, it's pretty solid. So all that total from start to finish, I have found that I typically publish, you know, about a year to 13 months after I, f I start writing the story. That's usually my timeline. Do, do, do. Let's see here. Um, ooh, everything just skipped again. Sorry guys, my comments are going so fast. Um, let's see here. 
what's this common? When you started writing, did you jump straight to novels or did you work on short stories? Uh, what did you prefer or recommend to get better? Okay, this is a fantastic question. So I actually have only recently heard the recommendation to start with short stories before novels. I'd never heard that before. So I definitely started with novels. And I mean, they're like two very different things. Like, I, I mean, you're learning about storytelling. If you're doing a short story, you're definitely going to be able to finish it a lot faster and learn about middles and endings and full character arcs. So that's a bonus because a lot of people probably don't like always get to the end. Like a lot of us get stuck in the beginning. So that is a bonus of a short story, but I kind of, I, I don't know. I kind of feel like they're two totally separate animals and I prefer novels personally. <laughs> um, bye Rachel. Thanks for hanging out. Say bye. She lives in Minnesota, you guys. And so does, um, oop, everything just skipped again. Anyway. <laughs> okay, let's see here. I have totally lost my place. Yes, I will answer this question. Vanessa, have you thought of making other types of merch for your series? So I have looked into like mugs, but I, I think I need, what is it called? Not a PNG file. Maybe that's the file. But anyway, the type of file that you could like pull the castle off and you could kind of work with the graphics. And I just have just the cover. Like I don't get any other graphics the way I did with the new covers. So I I don't know. I've tried designing some things and then I was kind of like, this isn't that great. Like the poster, they come in a weird size. They don't fit the book. So it crops off. Um, I could actually show you. Let me show you with the Curse Hunter. Use my very, very close face here. So this is like the size posters come in. It's the same size as like a, uh, what do you call this? Picture, picture, words today. Anyway, you can see how it cuts, it cut off the top here and it cut off my name at the bottom. So that's a dumb poster. Nobody wants that. So I have to find a place that makes the right size if I was going to do a poster or maybe put bars on the side graphically. I could figure that out, but I just haven't done it yet. It's one of those things where I have like a million things I want to do. So it's like, which one do I pick first? <laughs> so yeah, maybe if I can't get the covers to work, I still own the rights to them. So I would do something. I would definitely do something. I promise. <laughs> um, yay, good. Yes, Mandy is amazing. And she did your cover too. Yay. I love that. And yep, Rebecca's cover was with Mandy. She's fantastic. Let's see here. Um, is this the question I just answered? I think it is. <laughs> Where can I find beta readers? All right, I have some advice coming in this next week's video on that. But the short version is um, ask. <laughs> like if you have social media, um, they don't have to be writers. Beta readers are just readers. So the best thing you can do, and I tell people in my Discord group, by the way, you can actually join my Patreon and Discord if you want to like get to know writers right away. I will link Patreon below too. Writing myself a little note, Patreon. And my Patreon, all patrons are invited to this like writers group on Discord where we hang out. And we are doing a buddy read on there, by the way, uh, for Graceling. But that's a tangent. And the Patreon group, we have a beta reader tab. So what I tell them is like in this tab, if you wanna ask for beta readers, here's what I suggest. Be super, super clear on what you're looking for, like your timeline, when you're going to send it, how how fast you need it back, you know, how much you're going to send it once. Be super, super clear about what the story is, because how do people know they want to read it? If you're just like, hey, I have a story, like that, that's not enough for me. I doubt it's enough for you guys. So definitely share like, you know, it's about this character. Here's their struggle. Kind of like a back blurb feel, like something that's going to hook them and make them want to read it. Uh-oh. My internet went away. Okay. So sorry, guys. I think my internet just died. Okay. It's back. Okay. So sorry, you guys. Internet's been really, really weird here lately. I apologize. Like we keep losing our internet. So I use my phone and I put you guys in a hot spot. 
I hope, hope you guys are sorry. Uh, yeah, okay, so and end of the beta reader discussion is just be super clear. Like the more you can share, the more people are likely to be interested. So I hope that helps. And again, I will have a video out this Thursday for you guys. So if you haven't, you can click the little bell icon and it just notifies you whenever I have a video, which is really handy. I have that set for a few author tubers where I'm like, actually not just author tubers, a few YouTubers in general. So that I just get a little notification like, oh, they have a video. I'm going to watch it. Um, yay, I'm back. Sorry about that. That was close. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> um, I don't know what face I made. Now I'm nervous. Oh, yay. Good, good, good. Okay. You are welcome. I'm so glad that's helpful. And I hope that you'll like Thursday's video. But yeah, betas are, are my mom was my beta too. Absolutely. And uh, a couple of my friends. And while they might not give as much feedback as a writer, I feel like it's still feedback and it's still helpful. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and pull this back because I forgot to say like, no, I didn't. I did say that. Never mind. So I've given you guys the update on the audiobook, and I've told you about the covers, the rebranding, what I'm going through, and did I mention that it's coming out today on Patreon? I think I did. Uh, so that is the exciting news. Now Mandy and I are working on book three, and that leads to kind of, I wanted to chat about like hardcovers, and I wanted to share like my thoughts. So Mandy and I are we're strategizing as we go. So what I'm thinking is I want to get the first three front covers on Amazon all at once using. Like, yes, I have covers one and two, but I don't want to put them up and then it's like they don't match the other ebook covers. So I want to get that all settled. And then once I have those, I'm going to pop them online. Then we're going to work on hardcovers, I think. So let me know if you're excited about hardcovers because I don't know if I should pursue this unless you guys want it, but I thought it's different than paperback. So like instead of just coming out with a paperback, I wanted to do something different. And the other thing that I really want to do is I want to put excerpts in the back since I have written a lot more. I want to be able to put excerpts from the story in the back and maybe something that's like only the hardcover, you know, like maybe I'll put character art on the inside or like quotes from Amazon from you guys or yeah, I don't know, something for my patrons maybe. I, I just want to make them like unique and have secret stuff. So if you have ideas, let me know. I don't really know what to do. Um, Let's see here. Yeah, this is a great question. So I actually have, I don't know how to show you from here, but if you go to my like regular YouTube page and then you look on the right side, I'm pointing the wrong way right side. <laughs> uh, it's my left, but you're right. And there's like a rotation because I have too many to show all at once, but there's a bunch. I just put a bunch of channels on the right that you can check out. They're not just author tubers. There's a bunch of author tubers. And then there's like YouTube, uh, how to channels and content, how to channels. And what else? There's like a productivity channel I love. So yeah, go ahead and check that out if you're curious. Um, do you recommend writing multiple books at once? <laughs> I mean, yes and no. Like, <laughs> I am doing it right now, and I'm really bad at it. So it's going to depend on you and your personality. But I will just say that it's very distracting to me. Um, and I don't really do it all at once. I've never done two books in one day that I can think of ever. Just because, like, one day I only have enough like for one book and it's too much to go back and forth. But even within a week, I tend to be like one book per week. But right now I have the Cursed Hunter. That's this guy right here. I also have the Enchanted Crown technically, even though I haven't touched it in months, but technically that's on my plate. Um, and I want to do it, but I, I keep putting it off because I'm like, this is actually not the priority. And I have the Marketing for Authors book four, which is on book launches. And FYI, I have been writing that one on and off. Like I'm at 20, 23,000 words right now. And I think it's going to be around 30 to 40, somewhere in that range. And so half halfway to two thirds of the way through that. And then technically also I have the sixth book in the series that I've started, but not done much on just 
kind of brain dumped ideas. So I've got like four going, but really only working on one at a time. I hope that makes sense. Uh, let's see here. Have you thought about reading one of your books for an audiobook? I have, uh, briefly. <laughs> I have um, a microphone, but it's not great. I don't think I have the right equipment. I think you have to have really, really quality equipment for an audiobook. And number two, there's like all these weird rules, at least on Audible slash ACX, um, where you have to like pause for exactly, you know, 0.5 seconds if it's after a comma or something, and then like, or period, and then this much longer after this. And oh, there's a lot of rules to being an audiobook narrator that I don't feel like learning. That's not my skill set at all. And so I think it would also drive me nuts to listen to myself, <laughs> if that makes sense. Uh, let's see here. Why did you choose first person? How did you know that was the right decision? Okay, so <laughs> the truthful answer is I just wanted to try something different. And I did try first person for Evelyn's number and it didn't fit. So I actually started in first person and I was like, no, nah, that's not right. And then I just wanted to try it for this book. I also tried, um, what's it called? Present tense, present tense versus past tense. I think is how you say it, where you, you're like in the moment and you say like, instead of I walked somewhere, it's I walk somewhere. I hope that makes sense. And that did not work. Not because it didn't sound good, but because I kept slipping back into present past tense. Uh, and the present tense was fun, but I kept screwing it up. Like whenever I was, you know, more focused on just getting the story out, I slipped back into present uh, past tense. Ah, and so. Part of it is writing what's comfortable and the other part is exploring and then i think the third part to it was i checked if it was working and it was because sometimes first person can come across whiny and i wanted to make sure that the character wasn't coming across that way um and so you have to make sure you have the right character for first person like that they're going to that it's going to reveal good stuff instead of reveal annoying stuff i don't know if i said that well but I could do a video on that someday too. I would just want to research it better uh, to explain. Yes, absolutely. Let's see. Can you share the first page of the draft of the draft? Let me see if I even have that. Um, one second. Let me just shine you on Penny for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> All right, these are some of my proof copies. I'm guessing the first one was probably the one that has the white back <laughs> that I made when I only had the ebook cover and eight little pages wasn't responding. And I was like, oh, I want to make something. I think I'm not going to say yes or no until I look at it. Oh, okay. The first page. Didn't change that much. So sure, why not? This is the first page. <laughs> um, I'm actually curious, I might compare, but it says, I can't believe I'm doing this. Okay. My hand sat politely folded in my lap. I didn't clench the gold and pearl fabric of my dress or tap my fingers on my throne or even twitch an eyebrow in annoyance. But underneath the many layers of my skirts, my toes tapped a steady rhythm, counting down the seconds until dinner. Normally, I adored holding court with my father. Learning to rule the kingdom meant everything to me, but not today. Not for the last few months, actually. <laughs> I do not feel weird about that already. But I think the changes in that were minor. They were like adverb changes, like politely. Uh, let's see if I can pull up my Word doc. I can't remember what the first page says now. That's terrible, isn't it? Um, and so I think politely, I think Brittany actually was reading it and suggested a different adverb for that. Let me scroll down to it. It says, the first page now says, my hands sat clenched in my lap. So, okay, I got rid of the adverb altogether. And I, I think it was Brittany who said, like, can you find a more powerful way to say this, like a verb? So that's a great example. And then... 
the rest of it's pretty much the same. <laughs> so yeah, that's just the first page, though. I like had reworked that first page a lot more than the rest of the book. So that's probably why it didn't change much. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice from talking so much, you guys. This is introvert life. I don't usually talk this much. <laughs> Yay! Thank you for enjoying it. I appreciate that. Um, okay. I just missed a bunch of comments again. Do you have a video on how to create an author tube channel? I don't, but I did write myself notes once about reaching 10K and like what it took, I think, to get there. And then I scrapped it because I was like, that's not really what my channel is about because it's writing focus. It's not about YouTube and author tube and it's better to like keep your focus. But if you want, I could share like a brief, I might even have it here. No, I don't have it anymore. But anyway, I could share like my thoughts off the top of my head. I don't think I would do a video on that right now. Maybe in the future, um, if I grow bigger, I feel like when channels get really big, then they can kind of do whatever they want because people are happy to hang out. But right now, I want to keep focused on writing. But uh, I would say, like the number one thing is do your thumbnails make people want to click on them? And I have learned so much about creating really clickable thumbnails. And sometimes I even remake my thumbnails just to see if something else works. And number two, once they get into the video, do they want to keep watching? Like keep it interesting. Like if you're bored as you're editing it, then your watchers are probably going to get bored. So I've been trying to get more creative and put like overlays over it um, to delete the times when I say, um, all the time, as you notice when I talk live and I've been putting in sound effects, even I've been having so much fun with trying to make it more interesting and fast paced and not like, you know, 20 seconds of nothing happening. Or I used to put in uh, long intro clips, but nobody cares when they don't know you, like nobody wanted to watch that. And they're like, we don't know you yet. So now if I put things that are like for me personally, like for my patrons, I put that at the end because I want to thank them. But I know that if I start with things at the beginning that are more me personally, like if I put a penny clip at the beginning, um, it, that's more exciting for me, but it's not really a, an exciting thing for writers. So it might make people click away. I hope that makes sense. Um, oh, and then three, one more tip, uh, learn about SEO and how to that's search engine optimization and that's things like the tags and your title itself and just things that people are actually searching. So if you use words in your tags and your title and in your description, etc., even in your video um, file that are things people are searching, then YouTube is going to send it to those people. That's something that I don't know a ton about, but I know enough to know it's super, super important. So those three things are my tips for you. Oh, I love that. Thank you, Sarah. Yes. If you're, did you guys know that thumbs up actually helps YouTubers watching videos all the way through helps YouTubers. There's so many random things that tell YouTube, like, I like this person, you know, you should share their content more and things like leaving a thumbs up or watching their videos all the way through really help. So I appreciate that. Did you make scene cards while outlining your books? Um, I'm thinking back because every book is different. And uh, I feel like there was one book where I tried that. I try everything. I don't know if you guys are this way, but if somebody's like, this works for me, I'm like, heck, heck yeah, um, let me try it. Let me see if it works. And sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I think it's fantastic to try things because everybody's so different. The way that your brain works and my brain works, they're all different. So we have to figure out what works for us. And... I think that the the note card feel was just too scattered for me. So then what I did, I do remember this. I took the note cards and I put them on like a big poster board. And I have gotten these. They're like a dollar at the dollar store or Target, Walmart, you name it. They're like a dollar. And you just get these big white poster boards. And I moved on to like post-it notes or sticky notes. And then later on, I just wrote directly on it. So it really doesn't matter. Whatever works for you. If you like to make it pretty, you can do fancy stuff. But I would do like the Save the Cat Beats. If you guys have read the book, Save the Cat Writes a Novel, best book for writing ever. Um, I'll talk more about that in Thursday's video too. But I really, really think that 
every book. So I hope that encourages you that like maybe I use scene cards once, but now I am using really random things. My critique partner is actually telling me about Trello. Brittany has the video. I should link that below too. Where's my pen? <laughs> Brittany has a video about Trello. I'm going to link it below uh, where she, uh, it's, it's like no cards, but online, which is super cool. I thought that was amazing. So are you going to book con? I don't know yet. I don't know. You guys know everything's really up in the air. So I'm not going to commit to that yet, but I would love it. And I want to go as an attendee personally. Like it was fun to be a vendor, but I feel like I missed out and I wish I'd gone first as an attendee and then a vendor. Actually, it doesn't matter the order, but all I mean is that I want to be an attendee this time and just experience it without like worrying about selling books and stuff. So favorite books. Um, I might have given this away already. It's it's over there. I don't know if you can see it. I have this whole bookshelf is notebooks and writing books on craft, but Save the Cat Writes a Novel, 100% recommend that to everybody. Everybody. Like it, it calls itself the last book on novel writing you'll ever need. That's true. <laughs> and uh, the beat sheets, I use them for everything. And sometimes I'll go back to it during editing, sometimes I'll use it during writing. It really helps no matter what. Even brainstorming, it helps. So highly recommend it. And then a book for more encouragement that I always, always recommend that I gave to my patrons once is Bird by Bird by Anne Lamott. And again, I'll talk about both these videos or books in Thursday's video. So let's see here. Aw, I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. Thank you. <laughs> I know the first page, it was brave. Good thing I had edited it at least a little bit before I printed that draft. Let's see here. Oh man, it skipped again. Ah, you guys are the best. Thanks for hanging out. I know it's like over an hour already and I was gonna I was gonna be done in an hour, but oh, thank you for hanging out. We'll see you later. I'm gonna end soon, but I wanna make sure I hit everything and answer to all your questions. So I'm scrolling through really quick. When writing a novel, do you ever get stuck? <laughs> I didn't even need to keep reading to be like, yes. Uh, let's see, you get stuck because you have three drastically different ways to tell the same story and you just can't decide which one is best. <sighs> yeah, yeah, that's totally normal. Getting stuck in general is normal. If it's not this, it's something else. <laughs> um, and here's what I have to say. This is a personal opinion. You can take it or leave it, but I always say, don't let yourself get stuck. Keep moving forward. So for example, what I would do if I, I was stuck in this particular situation, my plan of action would be, okay, I'm going to take today or maybe three days, depending on how fast you write and what you feel comfortable with. And I would write a little bit of all three and either outline if you're an outliner or if you're more of a pantser, just go for it and just write them. But give yourself like a chunk of time, like one day, for each one. So like, you know, today's Saturday. So tomorrow I'm going to write this first idea. Monday, I'm going to write the next idea. Tuesday, I'm going to try the third idea. And then on Thursday, wait, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, <laughs> I'm going to decide which one was exciting to me, which one came really easily, which one was like, yes, that's it. And usually just by doing it, you will be like, oh, the other two ideas totally didn't work. That was not going to happen. So glad I just went for it and tried it because now I know. That's that's what I would do, honestly, if I were facing that situation. Um, I always get stuck when I don't know what to include in the story and where to go next. Yes. Yeah, so I talked about brainstorming a lot in one of my last two videos. I'm trying to picture which one. I've been editing a lot of videos lately. Trying, I was trying to get ahead. Originally, I was going to do two videos a week for you guys, but with everything going on in the world, I lost my momentum a little bit. But yeah, anyway, do you edit? I think that's supposed to be scene by scene or chapter by chapter. Oh, this is tricky too because everything changes all the time. I've never really looked at something as a scene though. That's my weird thing. I hear writers talking about scenes all the time. I don't really separate them that way in my 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 own mind. I don't know why. I honestly don't know why. Um, but I usually just do chapter by chapter or 
paragraph by paragraph if I'm really struggling. Okay, it's some cute movement in the back. What's happening, girl? Did you see something? Okay. I'm getting sidetracked, so I'm going to end this soon <laughs> and go eat lunch because it's 1230 for me. But, oh, shoot, I see a bunch of new questions come in. Okay, I, I promise I'll keep going and answer your questions. Thank you for hanging out. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, save the cat. Woo -woo. There is a book con. Yes. Okay, so just actually you can just Google book con and you will see it. It's in New York and it is now in July. It used to be in June, but they bumped it a little bit. All right, I'm going to just do tough love for this one. You got to just do it. Um, I, I guess how I deal with it is that I keep resaving new drafts. So, so I take, you know, draft one and I save it as it is. And then I make a new copy of it as a, for my editing. And then that's draft two. And then I save it as is. And I do, you know, draft three and I start working in that. So that way I have the stuff that I deleted is out there somewhere. So I don't feel like it's gone forever because that, that would hurt. Yes. But I know you have to make the right decision for the story. And usually that does mean you have to delete things. Almost always things have to go. It's just normal. So it helps to know, like, I have it somewhere. If I wanted to ever go back to it, I know where it is, but I'm deleting it. Um, hey, Alyssa, how's it going? There are great resources at the library to learn about SEO. Oh, cool. I didn't know that, Jackie, but I agree that it's very worth looking into. Um, July, okay, here we go, July 25th and 26th. Um, da -da -da -da. What's this question? The struggle with finding a story worth writing is I don't know whether to trust my own judgment, but whether it's worth writing or not, it might feel that way to me, but not my audience. Okay, I have so many feels about this. Number one, if it's worth it to you, it's worth it. Like if you're excited about it, that's what counts. And then number two, usually something that you're excited about, there is going to be other people out there that are also excited about it. Like there's, there's going to be people who relate to that. So sometimes it really helps to write the story for you. And just be like, what do I want? Like that can make a huge difference in just writing something you're excited about. And if you're not excited about a story, uh, that really tends to come through. So it's better to write what you're excited about anyway. Yes, the middle is tricky. Always know the beginning and the end. Any advice for the transition? So in case you didn't know this, the middle is normally hard for people. And it's called the saggy middle. <laughs> saggy middle syndrome. <laughs> um, and so... I mean, I'm going to sound like a broken record, but save the cat a hundred percent. They talk about how to do that midpoint beat, how to make it like a false victory or a false defeat, how to really make it powerful, use the catalyst and debate moments to really hit home and what your character needs and things like that. So hundred percent recommend that. Whoops. It just skipped again. I'm getting better at tracking when it skips on me. You're writing retelling too. That's awesome. Uh, tips to make it different, bring in other elements. You know how I talked about earlier where you kind of merge two ideas that totally don't relate, you know, and like the Hunger Games did and just make it its own thing. That helps a ton. Or put a twist on it, flip the script and make it the opposite in one detail. That can help too. As much as I prefer editing than drafting, it's overwhelming. It is. Take it one day at a time. There's this quote that I don't know if this is like going to freak you guys out, but it's just a quote that I heard where it's like, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Not that we eat elephants. I don't, but it's a good visual. Like it's such a big mountainous thing. You can't do it all at once. You can't do it in one day. You can't edit a book in one day, but you can edit a book one step at a time. So I hope that's encouraging. Um, would you have pursued it? No. I wouldn't have, I would have done, um, I would have been very strategic. I'm a big saver and I'm a big believer in, uh, I don't know. I'm not a risk taker. Let's just be real. So I pursued it partly because I actually had three months of severance pay. I got laid off, but that's a whole other story. If you want to watch my video on how I became a full-time author, but no, I actually talk about this in my video on how uh, working from home full time is that people think it's something they should just dive into, but I think it takes strategy. I think it takes planning. I think it takes some savings and making sure that 
Like, is this going to work for you? Is it even what you want? Maybe you want the health care benefits because you don't get that when you're self-employed. Things like that. Um, heck yeah, I'll give Penny a kiss for you. Penny's the sweetest. Um, favorite part is drafting. I love it because I have to not be a perfectionist anymore. I used to be a very big perfectionist, but now I tell myself, no, nobody's going to see this. Do whatever you want. This is the playground. Have fun. Yeah, I love it. Bye, Seth. I don't know what just happened. Okay, that's my sign. I think my internet's dropping out again. Sorry, there's so many questions, you guys. Let me know in the comments if you want to hang out again soon and do another live. I'll consider it. It's very fun to do. Um, oh my gosh, there's so many good questions. Okay, one one more, last one. What book are you currently reading? I'm reading Graceling with my patrons over on Patreon. We're doing a buddy read for the first time, and it's been really fun because like, as I get through it, I'm taking notes, and then we're going to talk about it at the end of the month so that there's no spoilers. And we're talking about non-spoilery things now. Um, but yeah, it's been really cool to read with people. So Graceling by Kristen Cashort. It is. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yay. I'm so glad that you guys helped this and that helped this, liked this, and that this live helped you. I appreciate you hanging out. Really, really excited um, to get back into writing now because you guys are so motivating and it really has <laughs> been fun to hang out. So thank you. Um, I have a couple banners. Oh, that's it. We got through everything. Yay. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say thank you for hanging out. And also don't forget the book signing, the virtual signing to help out the store. And I will link it below. And then don't forget also the cover reveal is happening on Patreon today. <laughs> um, I'll keep you guys posted. If you're not on Patreon, don't worry. It will be coming out eventually. And I will probably also share it in my newsletter before I share it publicly. So if you want, you can go sign up for my newsletter. That is linked below, I'm pretty sure. Um, but I will make a note, newsletter, just in case it's not. And uh, yeah, I will be linking everything below as soon as I hang up. We hang up. <laughs> Thank you for hanging out. I hope you have an amazing day. Definitely give this video a thumbs up. It does help me. And I appreciate you guys so much. Stay safe. And let me know if you want to hang out again in the future. Love you guys. I will talk to you again very soon. All right. Bye. <laughs>